What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in Lions podcast. It's another solo show today. And I kind of like it. You know, I like getting to talk to you guys, talk about football, talk about the Lions, talk about what we're witnessing, what the world is witnessing uh, in the Detroit Lions, your Detroit Lions, your 10 and 1 Detroit Lions. I'm your host. I'm Glover Quinn, former Lions safety, played back in 2013 to 2018. I am your host and I'm excited, guys. I'm excited. It's Thanksgiving week, season of giving, and the Lions are giving us a lot to talk about, giving us a lot to enjoy, and giving us a lot to be excited about. And hope you guys are excited getting to watch the lines every week. Um, you guys are traveling to the games, man. I, I mean, I was at the Houston game. You guys were incredible. I see it every week on the socials. I mean, what you guys are doing on the road in Indy. I mean, that's impressive. That's impressive. That right there will go a long way. I mean, the Lions went on the road yesterday, played against uh uh, Indianapolis team and I mean you never want to take anything for granted but you go on the road you're playing against a team and, and you get a win you find a way to get a win um was it the prettiest game that we've seen from the Lions probably not was it the cleanest game we've seen probably not but they find a way to win and they're playing great defensively right we're going to talk about that but after the game you know Dan Campbell talked and you know those guys are 10 and 1 um, I think I saw something that said that this is the first time that the Lions are 10 and 1 since I think 1934 when they started out like 10 and 0 or something like that, right? So it's been a long, long time since the Lions fans have been able to enjoy this type of success from their football team, right? It's a special thing. It doesn't happen very often. It really doesn't happen very often. I know we think that it happens all the time, but it really don't. It doesn't happen very often. Um, but the one thing that I continue to see every time I look at the after the post-game stuff and Coach Campbell is giving our game balls, and when you win nine games in a row, I mean, we're seeing this each and every week, right? They're giving out the game balls, and every last one of those guys are talking about how much they love each other, how much they enjoy playing, how like the brotherhood, all those things um, we're seeing, right? So I, it's got a lot of things that I want to talk about um, on this pod. I know I'm rambling a little bit, but first, let me thank our sponsors. Obviously, Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for online betting. From the earliest odds to in game live betting, Bet Online provides you with all of the action and the ability to watch the games as they happen. With the largest selection of odds on everything from football to NBA, college basketball, NHL, UFC, MMA, head over to Bet Online today to get in on the action. With America's most trusted site for online wagering, Bet Online. The game starts here. The game starts here. It's great because the Lions, they're rolling. They're rolling. They are the best team in football. I saw it on TV today. People are saying they're the best team in football. They're saying the Eagles are creeping, but the Lions are the best team in football. They've been that way. And the Lions have been winning so much and so well that. They can go on the road and win 24 to 6, and people are getting bored of that. They, they, they're they wanting the Lions to win like they won last week, 52 to 6. And look at those scores, 52 to 6, 24 to 6. That means the Lions' defense is not giving up touchdowns. They've went 10 quarters without giving up a touchdown. They've went three consecutive second halves without giving up points. When you can go into a game offensively and feel like we don't have to score 50 points, 40 points, 30 points, and we still can win the game, that's a powerful team. Powerful team. And that's what the Lions are doing right now. For so long, it was always about the offense, the offense. Even when I played there, it was the offense. Calvin Johnson, uh, some of the guys that we had on the offensive side of the ball, right? Defense got very little respect because offensively, they had to score a lot of points, right? 
And so now the, the Lions are playing great championship caliber defense. They have believed in Aaron Glenn. They stuck with Aaron Glenn and the guys are playing well. Um, yesterday, I don't think they had any turnovers. I don't think they had any turnovers. So that might have broke a streak um, of no interceptions, no turnovers. They've, they've been rolling for probably 14, 15 games right now. Um, but they were able to win that game. They didn't give up any touchdowns. They were great on third down. And you go on the road and you win 24 to 6. That is impressive. That is very impressive. But obviously, the biggest thing that I took coming out of that game was the injuries and Terry on Arnold not being out there. We had some of our some of our backups in Vildor, and we gave up a couple of big plays. Did it hurt us? No. Did they find a way to get stops? Yes. But, you know, people get caught up in seeing Terry on Arnold and, and different plays and penalties. And they have a lot to say, you know, but it's not always as good as it seems, not always as bad as it seems. Terry on Arnold has been having a great rookie season he's learning um and we missed him yesterday and we clearly saw that and that is one of the things that scares you moving forward right injuries 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 we saw a rash of them yesterday and we on a short week we got thanksgiving game coming up at home against a divisional opponent the chicago bears and you know the chicago bears their record doesn't say it but they've been playing somewhat decently um they just they've lost a lot of close games in the end right so we don't want that fortune to turn this week but we got a rash of injuries you know terry on arnold carton davis two guys in the secondary um david montgomery went down for a little bit yesterday taylor decker went down for a little bit yesterday and it's a short week so keep an eye on how these guys can recover going into this short week thanksgiving there's a lot going on you got family coming in town you got tickets you got all these different things you you're 10 and 1 got all this national pub and people talking and all these different things the lions got to be able to focus and not take this chicago team uh lightly it's a division of games the black and blue division we know that they're going to come ready to play okay so the lions got to get healthy refocus and come back and play. Okay. Yesterday wasn't the greatest game offensively. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown wasn't in the end zone. We've seen him in the end zone for eight games in a row. That streak was broke yesterday. Um, David Montgomery got in the end zone, but he also got banged up a little bit. Um, Jared Goff and Sam Laporta just, uh, it's a little, little, it's a little off. And, you know, Sam Laporte has been quiet this year. I mean, they got a lot of weapons. They got a lot of weapons. And when you add the emergence of J-Mo, you know, Amon Ross St. Brown, what he's been doing, the way they've been running the ball, Jameer Gibbs, incredible, David Montgomery, you know, the tight end can get lost at times, right? So he's been slow this season. They got to get on the same page. But I think after having a game like that, that is something that they will focus on. And I think we'll see a little better connection between Jared Goff and Sam Laporta going forward. Because as you continue to go and play in these games, we're going to need them. And the NFC North is by far the absolute best division in football. Okay? The best division in football. The Lions are sitting at 10 and 1. You got the, the Vikings up there and you got the Packers. Now, the Lions have went on the road and beat the Packers. They've went on the road and beat the Vikings. They got to play those guys again. It would be at Ford Field. So it's a great opportunity for the Lions to double up and beat those guys again. I don't think they've played Chicago yet. They get their first test with Chicago on Thanksgiving Day. But the division of games are tough and the Lions. Being in that division, it looks like we're going to have three teams out of the NFC North that makes the playoffs. The Lions does not want to drop any of these games to these divisional opponents. So it's going to be very, 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 very critical that they get healthy and that they 
stay focused down the stretch. You start out strong, you have to finish stronger. And it gets tougher. It gets tougher because you've been winning every week. Every week you've been winning. You've been winning. And I know the football eyes, the football gods say, hey, man, it's going to happen at some point, right? We haven't seen, you know, a team that's just rolled through in a long time, right? And so you want them to get some of these injuries out the way. You want them to get some of these bad games out the way. And they're finding ways to win in this stretch. But if you go back to the Houston game, wasn't a great game. Obviously, Jacksonville was the best game we've seen. And then this game wasn't a great game, but they won, okay? So they're in a little low right now, but I think it's going to be great for them going forward. I really do. I really do. I'm concerned about the injuries, concerned about the secondary, okay? Because if you remember the last game and the only game that the Lions lost was to Tampa, and they had two wide receivers. They had Mike Evans. They had Chris Godwin. And I think Chris Godwin gave us over 100 yards in the first half, right? It was tough for us to contain those two wide receivers. So not having Arnold, Carlton Davis being a little banged up, that 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 worries me a little bit, okay? That worries me. Obviously, Brian Branch. And what's the deal? What is the deal with Brian Branch and the NFL referees? I mean, I think this guy gets a penalty every game almost for a hit that – Honestly, I don't even know. I don't even feel like it's an illegal hit. I mean, yesterday he hit Buddy with his shoulder. Is it? Is it that he's hitting guys so hard that the referees feel like it's just unnecessary roughness? You don't have to hit him that way. And I just don't – like I really don't see it. I mean, if he was going helmet to helmet, you know – lunging at guys like I really just don't see it I don't know what's going on with the NFL referees and if they have a vendetta against Brian Branch okay it's a great phenomenal young player young safety who's playing phenomenal but every game he's getting a penalty and those penalties are costing money unnecessary roughness penalties cost money I don't know what the number is right now but back when I was playing and that was a little while ago but there would be 15 plus thousand dollars. And that will be for the first offense. He's had multiple. So I don't even know what his number is right now, but I'm pretty sure he's had several meetings. He's probably appealing some of these fines and I hope that he's winning, but we got to figure out what is going on with the referees and Brian branch. Okay. I don't get it, but It's a big penalty in every game. And um, the more you get him, I feel like the referees start to look for that stuff. They're looking for him. And when he has a questionable hit, questionable play, they're they're throwing the flag on him. They're not giving him the benefit of the doubt. Um, They're they're putting the flags on him immediately. And so we got to keep an eye on that because that could could come – that could loom – very large when you're playing in these big games. Obviously, we got to play Green Bay again. We won the first Green Bay game, but they ejected him early in the game, right? Early in the game. And as you get down the stretch playing these key games, we can't afford for guys to be getting kicked out of games. We can't afford to have an extra target on our back from referees who are just making, I don't know, bad calls. I'll say it, just bad, bad calls, okay? So, that's kind of my thing yesterday. The game was kind of blah, you know what I'm saying? To me, Jameer Gibbs was the bright spot. He's probably one of my favorite players on the Lions team, just watching him play. I love the way he runs the ball. Got two touchdowns, and you saw the celebration. Another one of my favorite, Allen Iverson was my favorite player growing up. And for him to hit the step back, him and Amara Ross St. Brown with the step over, you saw the guys dressed in the old school uniforms, the old school jerseys as they traveled. So they had that old school mentality and, you know, That was the dagger when Allen Iverson hit the three-pointer over Tyron Lue in the finals to win at least one game against the Lakers team. I was watching that. I remember it vividly. And to see a young guy pay homage to AI and the step over, that was dope. Now, the second touchdown, obviously, was a great one. Why you get the penalty? I mean, I don't know. The taunting, whatever, right? Whatever. But... Jameer Gibbs was the bright spot. 
He didn't get over 100 yards, but he was a bright spot. He's just a scary guy. Every time he touches the ball, you think it could be a touchdown. Every single time. He's that fast. He's that elusive. You can use him in the pass game, use him in the run game. So, Jameer Gibbs, you were the bright spot yesterday. Jared Goff did enough to help us win the game. Amal Ross St. Brown had a quiet day. Jamison Williams had a couple plays here and there. You know, it wasn't the greatest offensive game, but they found a way to win defensively, showed that we don't have to go out and score 40 a game. We can still win the game, and they've done that. So shout out to the defense for sticking strong. You know, 10 consecutive quarters, three consecutive second halves with no points. Shout out to the defense, and shout out to Jameer Gibbs. Great game, two touchdowns. Um, Lions, we got to get healthy. Khalif Raymond, we need to see what's going on with him. Um, Terry on honor, we need you back. All these guys, we need to get healthy. It's a short week, Thanksgiving Day game. And when I was playing there, it's just a, it's just a mod, model. The Lions do not lose on Thanksgiving. We just don't. So fans, show up. Be happy. Be hungry. Lions, show up. Be hungry for a win. Hungry for some turkey after the game. Um, and let's get this win. Let's get this win. It's another game on national TV. The Eagles played on national TV last night, and they've recaptivated America. Let's go take it back Thursday morning, 1130 Central, 1230 Eastern Time. Lions versus Bears, Thanksgiving Day. And there's one more thing I want to talk about. OK, so for a while, it's been talked about with the value and the devaluing of the running back position. OK. We all know. If you can't run the ball, it's very difficult to win football games. And if you look at a lot of the teams right now. that are leading the Eagles, Saquon Barkley. He's playing phenomenal right now. I think he has a career high in rushing yards already, and they still got six games left. He got 1,300 yards already. They still got six games left to play. He could possibly get over 2,000 this year. Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery. We've seen how those guys impact the game. When we don't get those guys involved, we lose to a Tampa Bay team, okay? When those guys are rolling, it opens up everything for Amar Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Obviously, Sam Laporta, everybody, the run game matters. You see what Derrick Henry is doing in Baltimore, right? Dallas didn't have a spot for Derrick Henry. Baltimore did. You see what Dallas record looks like. You see what Baltimore is looking like, okay? The run game matters. Defensively, if you can't stop the run, it's very difficult to win. And if you look at something, and I'll be interested to see what the numbers of this is, right? It's week 12, I think. So it's still got six games left to go. And there's multiple guys. Kirby Joseph being one. I think he's leading the league right now with seven interceptions. I think McKinney from Green Bay has six. I think another guy has, like, for it to be this early in the season, six six games left to play, those interception numbers are high. And I remember looking back, I remember early in the season, I felt like the defenses were playing phenomenal. I didn't feel like these offensive guys were just running through the league like we've seen in recent years. I mean, you look at Patrick Mahomes, his numbers. He's leading the league in interceptions, I think, right? When have we seen Patrick Mahomes leading the league in interceptions? Pacheco's been hurt. I don't know how much they are leaning on the run game. They're leaning on Patrick. He doesn't have all the weapons, and he's throwing more interceptions. The defenses are catching up to the passing game of these offenses and slowing them down and throwing interceptions. The teams that are running the ball are the teams that are going to be successful down the stretch, and the Lions are one of them. The Eagles are one of them. I think we could potentially be seeing an NFC championship matchup. Lions, Eagles, both guys running the football. And I think come playoff time, the Ravens, Derrick Henry, they're running the ball. So let's not talk about the devaluing of the running back position. Oh, the value is definitely still there. 
the value is definitely still there. And the teams that do not have a good running game, they're looking right now for somebody that can help them run the football. Somebody. Luckily, the Lions never felt the devaluing of the position. They drafted Jameer Gibbs. They signed David Montgomery. They gave him an extension. And they understand that running the football is the essence of playing great football in the NFL. And I think that's all we have, guys. I think that's all we have for today. You know, blah game. They won. Wasn't great. I'm worried about the injuries. I'm worried about them going forward because all it takes is one game like that where you get a few key guys injured and then move. Next thing you know, we're not the number one seed. We're the two seed or whatever. And now you got to go on the road in the playoffs, okay? So, Let's get those guys healthy. Let's bounce back. Let's get some energy. Let's rest up. we got two more days, and then we're right back into it Thursday morning. And stay tuned because I think I'm going to go live after the game on Thursday just to talk Lions football, immediate recap. It'll be fun. Subscribe to the Believe in Lions podcast. Go to bed online. Put your bets in. Tell all your friends to join us over here on the Believe in Lines podcast for the weekly recaps and lead-ups to your favorite, your NFL-leading Detroit Lions. Until then, happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving, peace out. 